welcome to another episode of the Red Arrow Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Marco, with my fashionably dressed co-host, right. Jessica. <laughs> Love the hat. Thanks. It's perfect for what we're going to talk about tonight. It is. You're coming up on Derby Week. Derby! It is Derby Week by the Hooray! time this posts. Horses. Horses, cocktails, Food. hats, yes. flowers. You have to have the hats. Springtime. Yep. It's a tradition, even though last year, Derby Day happened in September. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> threw everything off. COVID's such a... But before we get into all that, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking a whiskey highball. What is in a whiskey highball? <laughs> um, My whiskey highball has two ounces of Traverse City whiskey, right? Yes, it's we cracked open a bottle of the Traverse City Whiskey Company's bourbon. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> um, We've been there. Yeah. Go back no. to episode 26 okay. when we took our little adventure and we stopped by Traverse Anyways, City. Anyways, I filled up my glass with a bunch of crushed, crushed ice and then I put in two ounces of the Traverse City whiskey and then I filled up the rest of the glass with um, some sugar-free ginger beer, ginger ale, and a little twist of lemon and I'm calling it good. Ginger beer or ginger ale? Because we ginger, have both. We do have both. It's actually ginger ale. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and a little twist of lemon and that's it. Put a twist? Glass and drink it. Yes, a twist. A twist. A twist. What are you drinking over there ah, with yeah. green sticking out of it? Well, yeah, with my very herbaceous green that we cut out of our little uh, herb garden growing out in the garden when the mm -hmm. black squirrels aren't tearing it apart. Those squirrels are turds. Oh, my God. They're so naughty. They are such uh, They are invasive. They are not native to this part of Michigan. And they are not only are they chasing around the brown squirrels, which are native, and running up the trees and pissing off the blue jays and robins and finches and everything else up in the trees who are trying to lay eggs right now. Mm -hmm. They are climbing onto the deck where we have our herb garden on little uh, on our railing and in different planters pots. Mm -hmm. They keep tearing them apart and sitting in there and just digging into them. It's like they're not even well. They they're munching a little bit on the herbs, but not too much. Mainly they're just digging in the dirt looking for. I don't know, worms or whatever, Bugs. grubs. There's nothing in there. there I'm using plot, uh, potting soil straight out of the store. Oh, yeah. Such a mess. What's in your drink? Sorry. I'm having <laughs> a low-carb mint julep, which I'll do the recipe for that later. Because cool. Because it fits in with this episode. And yes, I'm also uh, building this with the ten or Traverse City. I almost said Tennessee. Traverse City uh, Whiskey Company's bourbon, which we cracked open tonight, which we've had before. It's so good. It is good. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a, a Michigan whiskey, even though we're talking about a very Kentucky episode tonight. Yes. Yay. Before we get into all the things, because tonight, sweetie, this is the last episode we'll post before the Kentucky Derby. This one will be our Dapper Derby Day episode. Ooh. Hopefully the first in a series of these. But, uh... Before we get into all our Derby Day festivities and recipes and everything, we have had quite a week and I've missed you because you didn't do the last episode. I did the last episode <laughs> with kid number one who filled in with, for a very froggy. I had a froggy voice. It was You really didn't have mad. a voice. I didn't. I it actually, was froggy and then it turned into no voice. I had to go see the doctor because my voice completely went away. And it was all thanks to an ear infection. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, really? You're not going to talk about your funny anatomy? No, I'm not going to talk about my funny anatomy. Thank <laughs> the you fact that your much. ear canal is supposed to go down, dive down, instead of going up Mine and then back up down. and then down, and it's stupid. Which and collects fluid and is more like, inclined Nobody to... wants to hear about anatomical <laughs> things on our podcast. They just don't. Let's talk about your email to HR this week, because that was a fun <laughs> uh, discussion at the dinner table. <laughs> I know you can't say much. How about this? What was the subject line to the email you sent to HR this week? It was overstaffing, day drinking, and on call. Oh my god! I like yeah. In oh my my, god my right. very robust career, <laughs> I mean, I I worked for my first international corporation at the age of seventeen, mm -hmm. and I had worked for other operations before that. I have never sent such an email or at least such a subject line to HR before, so I am like insanely jealous because it's hilarious <laughs> and most insanely <laughs> jealous that i've never needed to do so because like oh my god i don't want that discussion with hr it's pretty fun <laughs> it's pretty fun but that, that is all that's about all about we're gonna that. go into that because hr right uh and work but the fact that you have a subject line 
in an email to HR, the head of HR for your entire company, <laughs> with the subject of overstaffing, day drinking, and on call. Yep. Serious business. And it didn't really phase HR that much, did it? Honestly, no. She got a pretty big kick out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, when this particular issue was brought up to me, I... At least I, it wasn't um, like, you must report to headquarters immediately. No, I sort of laughed for a really long time. And then I asked the person who was telling me this, are, are you serious right now? Like, this is a thing? And... <laughs> So then I got to send my email and she, her response was pretty much the same. <laughs> is this a thing? I'll get back to you on this. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but no, everything is fine. And this is, I want to be very clear. Nobody is day drinking at my work. In case you happen to have put together where I work, nobody is day drinking and then coming to work. That is absolutely not a thing that is happening. No, but they did inquire if they could J drink while on the call, which <clears throat> they can't. And that they answer cannot, was not. And it's illegal. <laughs> yes. So no. And they're not. They were being very professional and asking before, proactively before they engaged in such like behaviors. Good for them. The answer is no. I think they're just looking for loopholes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Moving on. How was hockey? Oh, <laughs> hockey was hockey. Um, hockey as a player. Hockey was mixed feelings. My 40 plus team lost nine to two. It's impressive. <laughs> With my fourth goalie of the season. We're four games in. And my uh, C League team won, so that was fun. Yay! 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 Uh, and I only played in the two leagues this week. I'm like the previous weeks where I played. Let me see. I played one week. I played four games in a row. Another week I played in one game in each league. Uh, so playing was fine. And even the game we lost nine to two was like it was a good workout. It was fun. My dad actually showed up and took photos, which is kind of like it to oh. us was kind of like you know, groundhog day for spring or those key indicators. When we start seeing my 70 something year old father show up with his camera to take photos. And honestly, I mean, people make fun of like, Oh, he's there to take pictures of his kid. It's like, no, he's practicing his photography and we're subjects. (laughs) And he knows I'll be there because we're it's crappy lighting conditions no offense to the uh, rink owners. I'm making the cringe face. Right I know. Now. But from a photography aspect, it's not ideal for t- uh, lighting it conditions. It is for sure not. No. It is perfectly, it's normal rink conditions. And then it's people moving fast under those tough conditions. So he likes a challenge. And so he shows up and originally he showed up and he was only taking pictures of me, but then everyone else getting jealous. And so I'm like, take pictures of everybody. People so he does like having pictures taken of well, them doing and, fun and things. And it's better than a cell phone photo. So then I send right. out the link and, you know, sometimes they show up online. Sometimes they don't, but you know, it's more of a, you know, he is in the vulnerable age group. So the fact that he's there with his mask on taking photos and he stands uh, either on a step ladder, trying to look over the boards behind the netting, but over the boards, or he uh, goes in the penalty box and takes photos yeah, from there. It's, uh, it's uncomfortable taking pictures while you're wearing a mask. I've done it for several photo shoots now. And um, it's it, okay. I will tell you why it's so hard. It's because the back of your camera, the um, the screens and the viewfinder lens, they get all fogged up from you breathing in the mask in your air. Like your exhale shoots up into you're the You're doing lens. like heavy breathing like Bane? Well, when you're running around okay, like Hardy. a lunatic... And then you're like, okay, hold that pose. <laughs> While I'm like trying to adjust oh, everything. Yes, it is hard. And it, you're breathing very, very hard. And it's ridiculous. And yes, you fog up all of your glasses. I'll just keep making so, funny while I shut up, my drill up. Shut. I'm sipping a drill. But you keep telling I see story. that. Uh, no, that's the end of my story. Mm. I see that you've got drama written on here. On the outline? Hockey. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was hockey drama. There's always hockey drama. <laughs> Look, adult hockey is more about the drama. It is adult soap opera, pretty much. Uh, Especially when you get to the older leagues or the underperforming leagues in terms of skill set because they compensate with drama to make up for the fact that they can't actually perform anymore or never could. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, the over 40, we spend most of the time cracking jokes at each other at the face-off circles because we're like, we're not ideal athletes, so we can (laughs) can crack jokes at each other because we aren't completely winded. Not ideal. (laughs) And in the C League, like, I'll crack some jokes, and it's already my second game of the night, but some of those kids are like, oh my god, it's so serious. And it's like, chill chill the f*** out. 
you know, it's like nobody cares, especially at the rink we play at and the leagues we play at and the, uh, the culture I've, uh, I have and the uh, other captains have helped in uh, cultivating over the years, especially those of us who have been around a while. It's like we just want to show up, have fun, skate, sweat, burn some calories, and then go goof off and drink about beverages together, usually around the glass. But right now, because of COVID, we're out in the parking lot tailgating. And uh, yeah, well, we've got some we I think I spoke about this before. We we split our 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 hybrid C40 plus league. It's uh, 40 and over players of all skill levels, but old. And then the C level, the just, you know, kind of intro. You know, they've survived intro to hockey at the adult level. Now they're testing the waters and playing. And then we've got some B level players, ones who are slumming it, hanging down. And especially this season, we got a lot of new faces who uh, really should, based on their playing history, be in the B League, which for us is a, you know, we got a small hockey community. So it's A and B combined. So it's it's an interesting animal. Well, we've had some uh, we had some drama this week. We had a few players who were already playing with uh, my role as commissioner, who had already been given warnings because it wasn't just because I thought they were playing rough. But when you got five captains between the eight on Sunday night saying uh, they're throwing hip checks, they're not playing consistent with what they should be doing for this league or what they do at this rink, I got both. Of officials telling me from the game going hey, you got to give them warnings when they've got written warnings already sent to them and then there's a incident and i in my weekly email that i send out to the league i just basically made a bunch of fight club movie references like fight club doesn't take place at the rink fight club takes that place at redacted on redacted you know just to make fun of it but really, it was like, this isn't the place. And if you're coming in with your championship aspirations and you're going all out in week three or week four, you're at the wrong, you're in the wrong league and you're at the wrong link, rink because, well, first off, everyone makes the playoffs. So what the hell are you doing? Hmm. But we had a fight break out. Uh, we had an incident against the boards and then two players kind of got riled up and then somebody else came flying in from the blue line down to the crease to like join the fray and... Those who had warnings were told to transfer and suspensions were issued. And that's all my job. And it's based on rules that just established by anybody. But um, some of these teenagers who apparently hadn't read the rules were still mad that they had to forfeit a game earlier because their captain didn't write in their subs. That's how we do it here. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then it just turned into days of teenagers cursing me out, cursing the rink out, owner out, getting banned from the rink. Great. Uh, yeah, and then me trying to find subs and, you know, not subs, but permanent replacements and refill a team and the captain being an idiot. Like, when I lay out, like, I've lost my sense of humor, you probably shouldn't the next morning go, yeah, we're going to propose a trade just for the sake of proposing a trade, and I want to trade the 50-year-old you just put on my team for a 19-year-old who can barely stand up. That's funny. You've already had enough 19-year-olds. You had two 19-year-olds on your team and a bunch of immature players and oh my God, I'm going to kill you <laughs> kind of thing. Okie dokie. Yeah, it's like you need this 15 year, 50 year old just to chill out your locker room. Nice. Yeah, so um, last week we, we sat down, or that we, me, I sat down with Kid One and we talked about group dynamics and interactions with at the middle school level with Kid One. Little did I know that it would be very prophetic for what happened on Sunday night <laughs> and throughout this whole week. And oh my God, it's just like, yes, adults, quote unquote adults, everyone over the age of 18, some over the well over the age of 18, still operating at that middle school lunchroom mentality that Impressive. we spoke about last week. Yes, very. Impressive. I mean, for some people, it just never goes away. It's very true. Which is sad. So that that was the week on top of everything else. And all I can say is hashtag commission life. Commish. The, the commish. commish. Did you watch that show? I, you know, my mom did. I didn't really get into it. I was aware of uh, the commish. Uh, I was more aware of him when he became uh, the thing for Fantastic Four. That movie was Yeah, stupid. I was aware of the commish. He it was a dude on TV called the commish, and he had a bald head. And he that's was in the, the shield, also. He was nope. more badass in the shield. Probably. Probably. 
But moving on, yeah. So we're still moving. We still got more hockey to play. And again, everyone makes the playoffs in all the leagues. Super. Yay. I see that you got COVID shot number two. What do you mean? I'm glad you're seeing the outline. No, like okay. you don't aren't aware that I got my COVID don't shot number say two. It? No, keep okay. going. No, but you did get COVID shot number two. So now you are completely vaccinated. Hooray for you. Hooray for me. And you didn't get like ridiculously sick like I did. I didn't get sick. I did get ridiculously lethargic though. Yeah. And, like, you were fatigued. pretty tired. Yeah. But like it you didn't me get. Out. I actually went and took a nap. Like I went and got my shot, went and picked up kid four uh, from her grandparents' house. I picked up kids uh, one, two, and three from school. I got home. I said, okay. Who's got homework? Who needs me? Who needs me to sign stuff? And I'm going to bed. And I'll, I'm setting an alarm and set your alarms on your phones to make sure I'm up in time to get you guys dinner and get you off to hockey and ready for Taekwondo and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And yay. And we made it through. No, and but like I got a giant headache and then I got joint aches in every single joint in my entire body and I was super tired and you didn't get any of that. You just got tired. I got tired. I got, well, of course, I got the usual, um, I got the shot in my left arm. And of course, the the tissue in my upper left arm got sore, just like anytime you get a sure. shot, like whether it's a flu shot or a tetanus shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that my right arm got sore. That's weird. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, but my right arm got sore um, pretty much about mid forearm up to the shoulder. Got on the right re- side? On the right side. I got really <laughs> sorry, even though the shot went into my left. That's so funny. Uh, and it only lasted a day, and it was fine, but it made, um, actually a little over a day, but it made coaching on, I got the shot on Tuesday. On Wednesday, made coaching hockey very difficult. Yeah. Because it's very hard to do a shot and control a shot or even do passing drills when your arms don't want to work. Yeah. Survived it. Made it through. And like, well, good. well, that and I was like very tired, having a very hard time focusing the the head of the rink, the head of the program, the head coach was like shouting because especially when we got to the second set of a uh, second age group I was working with. He didn't send me drills ahead of time. So then he's yelling at stuff at me across the rink. Well, I can barely hear it. And I'm having a hard time focusing throughout the night anyway. Um, so I just had to like skate from like what? What do you want me to do? <laughs> and then I'm running a drill and he keeps skating over. I'm like, I got this. <laughs> I got it. Just let me do it. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I didn't bother to tell him that I had gotten my shot the day before. I probably should have. I mean, he probably he would have understood and been like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mrs. Rink owner knew because she saw my thing, I, my post online. But, you know, that's like assuming that something you see, you tell me. I don't. You don't. <laughs> so, I do not tell you so half I, of the things I find on the internet. No kidding. So I uh, I don't naturally assume that just because I've seen that she's seen an Instagram story that he knows about it. But that was COVID shot number two. So yay. So bye. Cinco de Mayo. I should be you know, I've ready had, to continue quarantining. Yay. Well, I've had both doses. COVID is still real. Oh, I know it's still real. Breakthrough cases but are a thing. in terms of me, like if in case I'm accidentally exposed, I also know I should have you full should vaccination fine. power by Cinco de Mayo. You should be, but also... I'm not arguing all the other crap, so let's not get into that. Fine. Yay. Okay. Um, let's talk about spring. No. It's spring, I don't want to talk about spring. The lack thereof. Spring is... Earth is stupid. It Just was an Earth Week this week. I know. It was Earth Day happened this week. I, and I what know. did the Earth do to us? It snowed a lot. the Earth. <laughs> I'm going to sip my mint no, julep, my it's... fresh mint that we grew that I had to bring into the house. It's snow. And keep on, we got the planters that fit on the railing of our deck. So to make sure the winds that come out of the west uh, don't blow them over, I actually have screws going through the plastic planters yeah. into the railing. Had to undo all that because it dropped below freezing around here. Mm-hmm, and we had to bring the plants inside of our house. Yes, we and did. And we made sure not to bring... The pot that contains our frog named Pothole. By the way, Pothole's not house. alone. I, I heard Pothole has found a girlfriend all the way up on our freaking deck, which is like... And it's not Rosemary. 20 feet above... As Kid 3 pointed out, Rosemary's fat. 
<laughs> like, don't fat shame the frogs. Fat shaming the frogs. Um. Anyways, our deck is like twenty feet above the top of the ravine, and the frogs don't live at the top of the ravine. I have no right. idea where this frog our came from. Our deck is about twenty feet above the patio with the the pool deck. That's the top of the ravine. Well, okay. The top of the ravine is a good thirty feet. Anyways, from the bottom of the ravine. Right, so this frog had to travel a distance to get all the way up onto our deck, and then it magically found a mate. Like, I I have questions about frogs. Mm -hmm. I want to know how they found each other. I want to know why they have moved into a potter's plant. I want to know how that frog has managed to stay alive inside of that plant without coming Was out for a like eight months. Was it froggy version straight. of the show Singled Out? Uh, who is the narrator of the sto of the show? Who Isn't that the, the one we used to watch when we were like in college, when we were like um, in first aid class together at that, Western? That was not singled out. That was that like singled first, out. No, it wasn't singled out. Was on MTV and what, it had that horrible well, we, man it, on it and Jenny McCarthy. There was two for a shows. While. There was Cheaters, and then there was um, <laughs> that was the other <laughs> dating one where like they eliminated people throughout the process. I mean, they did eliminate people throughout their process on Singled Out, but they did on every single other reality TV show in the early 20, 20, 20 2000s. Like, they went out with, like, you're going on a no. foursome date, they became a threesome date, they became a twosome date at the end. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. I don't know. It was, it was interrupted. wonderfully horrible. We used to go into first aid class early in the morning in the rec center at Western. Uh, you and I are taking it. Highly competitive in this uh, first aid class. It's very important that I win. Yeah, well, you won. You couldn't find the instructor's belly button, so you had trouble with that, so I beat you on points okay, on that. I did not really want to feel up my instructor. I'm happy that you did, but I was very uncomfortable I doing that. I wanted to win. By the way, we both got an A in this, but it was who had the higher A. Anyway, except for we were also taking this class when 9-11 happened, and so that was the one morning when instead of everybody in the class debating and fighting over which crazy trashy dating show we were going to watch in the morning on the tv in the classroom waiting for the instructor to show up it was which news network work we we're going to watch because the airplanes were hitting the towers and that dates us okay let's um maybe not talk about 9 11 during our drinking podcast because it's sad okay anyway so getting back to <laughs> i mean do you just want to talk about world politics because that's also sad nope let's move on to drinking and horses <laughs> Maybe just cut out all the How about this the fact that it snowed this week? Yes, it snowed. It is late April and it snowed, it snowed here in Michigan. It snowed in the place where I work too. Or okay, northern Indiana, southern Michigan. Yes. It snowed. That sucks. It did. All of all of my So I think that's a reason to drink. So darling, cheers. Cheers. Ooh, clinkies. I see you also have one of our city map glasses so we've got these uh, we've got rock glasses that have the uh the road maps for various cities they're the ones from them. uncommon goods in case anybody wants to know where they're from uncommon goods or uncommon grounds uncommon goods is it okay mm -hmm. uh they can be found other places too yeah um what city do you have tonight new orleans or as some people pronounce it nolens new orleans where's your glass from tallahassee 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 I heard Tallahassee referred to as Tala Nasty recently. And I, <laughs> recently? I, How about when we lived there? No, I don't remember anybody calling Back it. Back in the day, before four kids. I don't remember anybody calling it Tala Nasty at the time, but somebody recently said it to me, and I was like, ha ha, that's so funny and accurate. <laughs> All right, Tala Nasty. Let's, uh, let's dive into <laughs> our Dapper con Derby Day uh, special. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through... Uh, Items for hosting a derby party, whether it's just you with your family or having people over, you're doing it over Zoom because we're, you know, it's the COVID time, COVID year part two. We're going to dive into if you are so inclined to be a, a uh, low carb diet. Mm -hmm. We've got low carb drink recipes and food recipes for throwing your uh, derby party. Yes. And if you're not, then, of course, you can swap out our low carb alternates for the high carb pieces. Yep. But given that Derby Day is not a two and a half minutes. It's an all day affair. So, you know, all things in moderation. And you might want to keep those carbs in check because the really good, yummy f southern food that goes with Derby Day is, is bad really for you. high in carbs. <laughs> so, bad so anything for you. you can do to kind of moderate what's going on. Good idea. Mm hmm. 
All right, let's do some segue music and we'll dive into that. Jessica, we you ready to get your derby on? Yes. All right. Before we get really deep into this, uh, we Derby Day has been important to us uh, for most of our marriage now, or not. Okay. I think you like it more than I do. Well, it's been something that we've been doing for a very long time. Yeah. Did we really get into this before we got married? Or it was around the time we got married, right? Like after we got married. It was slightly after, but not too far after. We were no, still in Tallahassee. Like a couple years. Yeah. It went from just something we had on the TV to like eventually evolved into this is like it's Derby Day. Let's get dressed up for it. Let's have a party. Let's do all that. So it was an evolution getting here, be given that neither of us is from Kentucky. Neither of us are be equestrians um, or I horse went people. To school in Kentucky one year. Did you go to school in Kentucky or were you living in Kentucky and going to school in West Virginia? Nope. We lived in West Virginia and my school that I attended was in Kentucky. Yeah, but they threw you into detention for holding up your socks and I didn't say it was a good school. I said <laughs> it was that a Catholic I went school. Again, I didn't say it was a good school. I said Ouch. that I went there. Okay. So <laughs> but you don't have like a big you're not drawn to horses. We're not equestrians. No. We didn't take high, horse riding no. lessons or anything. No, I, back I enjoyed we were in school, riding horses. So, when like I was back little. when we were back when we were in Florida, what did Derby Day look like? Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but true. True. Uh, us sitting around having cocktails and really either doing stuff around the house while we were having cocktails. Or we were doing work for class or research or degrees while having cocktails and having horse racing on our TV in the middle of our house. Mm -hmm. The one that really comes to mind for me at this point in our lives together, our air conditioning conked out in Tallahassee in May, which at that point is like, it's It is so hot 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 in Florida. (laughs) And our air conditioning on our little townhouse had died. So you were dealing with the technician running up and down the stairs because we had an outside unit and we had an indoor unit and the indoor unit had turned into a block of ice where the air um, filter went or something. Oh, the air filter became like a giant sheet of ice. Yeah. So they were running around dealing with that. And I'm down in the kitchen dining room area at the table with my laptop uh, writing the introduction for my dissertation. Mm -hmm. Drinking mint juleps made with Jack Daniels. And before the, all the purists freak out, yes, I realize that's a Tennessee whiskey and not a bourbon, but... It know, was on hand. It was on hand. It was grad school. Your dad left it behind from one of his visits. <laughs> and I'm not going to turn down free alcohol in grad school. Nope. And no grad student will. Nope. Who's inclined to drink. Uh, so I'm there. I'm having my cocktails. We got horse racing in the background. And I'm trying to make a good case for why my... Basically, my whole future matters. <laughs> my Something I was pouring night and day research into for years matters as I write the intro because, uh, spoiler alert, when you do this kind of work, the intro is one of the last things you write. You really do. Well, you do some background research to begin with. You really write your methodology first, how you're going to do it. You have your results. And then later you write your uh, intro. Like, why is this important? Why you should you care? And why you should read the rest of the document? It's completely written out of order. And it's one of those ones where I'm like sitting there and drinking these mint juleps with Jack Daniels going, yeah, I'm doing a project on airport (laughs) security. And why does it matter? Three Mile Island. Yeah. Nuclear reactors. Meltdowns. Yeah. You know, accidents. You know, and you uh, slip and vigilance changes your entire industry and why it's important. Yeah, this is a great idea. 9-11. Done. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, totally influenced by... um, Min juleps in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, no, your was dissertation that, intro was actually really well written. I read it several times. It doesn't. Oh, I got a lot of spell checking after the fact, but. Fulgurations? Fulgurations was a word that showed up in there at some point. That was for, okay. Um, <laughs> but the the idea to tie Three Mile Island to airport security and how uh, a lapse in vigilance can change an entire industry and change the whole country and change viewpoints. All came out of um, inspiration while 
drinking mint juleps while Kentucky Derby was on in the background. Yeah. And I mean like the Derby Day event erases. It was mid afternoon. Really do you need to buy And also you. sweating it out because the air conditioning was broken. I need to buy you the shirt that says I drink and I know things. Well, that's true too, but we knew that when I was at Michigan Tech and I was winning all the trivial pursuit when I was inebriated. It's true. Yes. So that was uh Derby Day back in the day. Uh, then we, our Virginia days, what did Derby day look like in our Virginia days? I don't know. Virginia days are full of babies. That was what our Derby days looked like. Babies. <laughs> babies. We had babies on hand. It's like, oh, there's a race on. Don't cheer too loudly. Or you might wake up the babies. <laughs> How about in Michigan? Derby parties in Michigan. Woo! Yeah. Actual parties with like grownups and not babies. Hooray! I mean, the babies were there, but we had babysitters. We did, even though we were in the house and we didn't like send the kids away. They were at the house, too. Yes, but the babysitters kept the kids in line and they made it so that the kids left the grownups alone. Yay! Babysitters. They're the best. In fact, we told the babysitters they didn't have to change diapers. Nope. Just come find us. We'll do it. And then they you can just have had the to wipe back. noses and keep the kids happy and like let the parents have a conversation. But if there was like somebody who, you know, like the little one, little, little ones needed to be fed, we would feed them. Mm-hmm. We would change diapers, everything. But if we could get like three words in a row without being interrupted, that'd be great. Yep. Hiring babysitters for adult parties is the best thing ever. Highly recommend it. We've done it for derby parties. We've done it for Christmas parties. Pretty much any chance we get where we can have more than like two couples over, we're hiring a babysitter. And they evolved over time, but they were a lot of fun. And we Mm -hmm. made sure it was fun for the adults and the kids. But we also had a little bit of separation between the kids and the adults, even though they were all at the same party. And it made it great. And it's gotten the kids into it. And we're not big gamblers. We're actually we're not gamblers. but No. (laughs) <laughs> we're not big no. betters, but it's more about the social aspect of it for us. And so this is something about it's springtime. It's a social event. Let's do it. So this is our this is what this whole episode is about is how do you do Derby Day and have fun with it and enjoy it. And if you're on you're watching what you eat and you're watching your macro is great. If not, well, we got a bunch of recipes that are just super tasty. Mm-hmm. and games you can play and everything. So let's dive into Dapper Derby Day Essentials. What do you need to have to have your Derby Day? Jessica, first off, what do you need to do to have the perfect Dapper Der- Derby Day? Boy, that's a tongue twister. You need to turn on the Derby. That would be helpful. That's it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the Derby like lasts all day long. It's not just the one race. There's a whole bunch of races before the one race. So... You need to watch all of them, or at least have them on in the background for background noise. Look around, because they usually start around 11 a.m., mm-hmm. and there's just race after race, different age group of horses, different lengths, different uh, racing surfaces, whether it's dirt or turf or but whatever. It's fun. So the horses in the other races have just as fun names as the horses <laughs> in the main race. So, like, if nothing else, you will entertain yourself by reading off the list of names. And for the f- average spectator mm-hmm. who has absolutely no clue about horse racing, mm-hmm. like us, you have just as much chance of picking the winner in those races I mean, as you do in the main just, derby because you don't know anything about it. All you either. need to do is pick the horse with the funniest name. and That's how I won on Tabasco Cat one year with my mom. I don't remember. We were betting nickels. Any of the horses I've ever bet so, on. So uh, growing up, like my mom and Tabasco I would always bet on the Cat. Kentucky Derby. But it was, I think the big spending year was the year that we bet quarters. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Along with... Uh, having an essential derby day experience you know not only do you need to turn on the derby and turn on all the races you need to dress the part and really the only thing you need to dress the part is a hat hats you must wear a hat if you are a girl and you're doing any sort of derby thing you need a hat it's just fun and the bigger the hat and more flamboyant the hat, the better look if you want to wear cut off jean shorts and an old concert t-shirt that's full of holes cool have With a hat. 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 Fascinators are also acceptable, but the, the floppy hats are fantastic. You want an old hat that's covered in like stains from painting your house and staining your deck and old shorts that are just trashed from running shorts? Cool. 
have a hat. Yeah. You got to have can, a hat. You can put a bird on your hat. That's a good Make idea. the hat out of an old newspaper. Doesn't matter. Got to have a newspaper hat. Newspaper hats. Yes. Doesn't matter. Do not spend a fortune on the hat. I mean, no. you could, but you need to have a hat. Something on your head. I need to make a hat that's got jellyfish on it. That'd be awesome. This is a good idea. What else yep. do you need to do uh, for a dapper Derby Day essential besides turning on the Derby and dressing the part? A dapper Derby Day? It sounds like you need to wear a bow tie. But <laughs> actually, what it you has need... been done. Yeah. It might be happening again. Mm-hmm. What you need to do is have betting and or games. We're not talking high rolling here either. No, we're not. We're no. Penny I mean, bets, you can do that. It's fun. Monopoly but, money works. Yeah, this is especially important. Like it's not important, but like if you have little kids and you're trying to introduce them to the wonderful world of betting on the Kentucky Derby, <laughs> or just horse racing, or just having the fun. <laughs> yeah, who's gonna like, win? Do it with pennies or nickels or dimes or even quarters. Who's gonna Keep do it. the dishes? Yes, I love it. Do the dishes, clean or up the living the, room, whatever. You know, bragging rights. Yeah. All that good stuff. Bragging rights um, on who's like, you know, who But you won. can sort of teach them about betting in a fun way. Also, it's just, yeah. Even those know. little Hershey it's miniatures, good. the winner gets an extra. Everybody gets one and the winner gets two. I like it. Or the winner gets the pick one. Yeah. So you, you need to have some form of betting, I think, when you have a derby party. Yeah, we've had a lot of games over the years. We've had grown-up games. We've had kid games. Uh, Jess, what were some of the kid games we've done over the years? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. What was winner, winner, chicken dinner? Um, you, so you fill out a racing form for the derby, like the actual derby, and all of the undercard races. And you pick a winner, and then you get a prize! And you can put together little prize packages. Um, Before your party, that's what we did. We went to like the dollar store, and we found these little... like teeny tiny little trophies and we had beads and bubbles and the kids thought they were hilarious it was great we still have the pile of those trophies in our front closet <laughs> we have a lot of trophies we yes. got excited and bought tons and we didn't need tons we so everybody got a, ne- a trophy we didn't have nearly as many kids show up as we thought uh that's not a bad thing yeah that's right um how about a grown-up game well we ha- did do the hat draw where we um because our friends knew just as much about the actual horses as we did in terms of racing. We're more about like the spectacle and the fun of the event than mm-hmm. the actual betting. So we had the hat draw where you drew a horse's name from a hat. If the horse you uh, picked finished in first place, you won. And that was it. It's like, yay. You know, and if you didn't, if you, there was 20 mm-hmm. horses and there were five adults, we had more than five adults. You'd each have multiple horses. Yeah, well, you made sure everybody was covered. Jess, what was another kids' game? Um, Top Hat. Ooh, what was Top Hat? Okay, Sounds so like Top kids, Gun. We gave the kids like a bunch of craft materials, and they had to make a hat. And then the parents had to vote on their favorite hat, and then we had prizes for the top three winners. Because we had fun at the dollar store. The dollar store is a great place. Yeah. Like, all kinds of things to buy in there, and you can turn them into prizes. You can turn them into whatever you need organizational materials, whatever. It's great. Um, don't underestimate the power of the dollar store and the things inside of it. But yeah, and then the kids well, like... Not, let's not forget but, that. Let's not underestimate the power of they just want to win and yeah, it doesn't and matter get, what the little trinket the is, they uh, won. They won. But then the kids like, they got to engage in making a craft and use their creativity and their imaginations. And, and that's busy. And it kept them busy and the babysitter's busy. But also then they paraded around in these really cute little hats and it's adorable. Like, how could you not love it? So, yeah, top hat. It's wonderful. What other kind of adult games do you have for the derby? <laughs> of course, just as I'm chewing on crushed ice. Uh, the horse auction. So similar to the hat draw, because we know uh, Jack about horse racing. We had a, a horse auction. Each horse is auctioned off. Uh, if your horse wins, you get the pot. Yeah. So, so, like, you know, we start and then we were doing dollar. Yeah. And I think the the, high, the top horses were with the best odds in the full Kentucky Derby went for 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. But all the money that was bid on all the various horses and someone as cheap as a quarter 
I will say the winner. The winner of the whole race got all the whole pot. Yeah, I will say the horses with the funnier names were the ones that drew the most money. Well, in the main derby, the ones with the best odds. Yeah, went drew the best money, and that they don't always necessarily win. They don't win, but yeah. uh, sometimes they do, fun. but not always. <laughs> Just give us one more uh, kid game. Perfect pony. Ooh. So for this one, you're gonna um have the kids create their own jockey and racehorse. And I think what we did was we printed blank like horse forms and um, jockey shirts. And we gave the kids crayons. We had buckets of crayons all over the playroom. And we said, children, draw your pretty perfect horse and design your own jersey. And the kids actually really liked the jersey part because they had seen all of the jerseys on TV and they're like, oh, I like the pink one with the black diamonds. Oh, I like the green one with the circles. Like the white oh. one with the red dots. Right. Like there's all kinds of combinations of shapes and colors that you can do. And they really got to let loose with their imagination. Um, we had one kid that made like a rainbow colored jersey. And I thought that that one was particularly spectacular. Um, anyways, we for when we did it, we did prizes for the top three in each age group so pretty much everybody got a prize and that way we weren't holding the kids who were like in junior high right. up against the like three-year-olds right so no everybody got to feel good about their creation everybody got to use their imagination and everybody got a prize and it was really fun and it kept them engaged yes made uh -huh. life easier on the babysitters for sure yep all right one more adult game <gasps> Well, there's always the fun filled one that you have to like you can find online, which is um, My Little Pony or Porn Star. Where <laughs> it's an online survey of uh, of various characters to those games, which may in hindsight for My Little Pony. us being children of the 80s. Have you you've done this one, haven't you? My Little Pony or Porn Star? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How well did you do? Because I know I failed. I failed a lot. In hindsight, those are pretty nerd or pretty nerdy names. Sorry. Pretty dirty names. They're bad. Yes, they are. But no, 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 no. The ones we've done for games, we've done this because the kids can run into the room at any time. Uh, Elmer's Long Shot, <laughs> which is also kind of a uh, twisted name, but the parents get the joke. And that's uh, pick a horse, any horse. If your horse finishes last place, you win. <laughs> Yay, Glue so Factory. We had to explain Glue Factory to our daughter tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well then she just got on google and tried to google she did. it she asked siri what is why would you turn a horse into glue and we were like oh you're diving really deep into this that you're sucks. asking you know the wrong question to siri or you're phrasing it the wrong way yeah but anyway it's something fun it's like okay if you can't pick the winner can you pick the loser mm -hmm. yes yes so those are uh, a few uh, grown-up games a few kid games there's others online you can have fun with this tweak these whatever yeah uh but the main part is to keep people engaged, keep something going on, keep the conversation going. But there's a break between games, too. So you get the conversation, the laughter and the uh, socializing going. And that's what this day is all about, because it really it should be a garden party, so to speak. Even if you're uh, not in Kentucky, if you're not at Char Churchill Downs, you're just out on the deck, out on the lawn, around the house, enjoying it. The, there's a race every so often. And the rest of the time, you're just kind of grazing through the food. Yep. Talking to each other, enjoying mm -hmm. that. Hey, it's not winter anymore. Even if you're in the part of the country ah, we're in or even where in it Kentucky, snows. Well, it's more likely it could snow, but more Actually. likely it could be a rainy derby day or it could be a sunny and very nice derby day. Mm -hmm. I don't like when it's a rainy derby day because I get nervous for the horses. Yes. But as you go through all this now, there are the heavy bettors and they do always talk about this race lingo and this betting lingo. <laughs> I love lingo. It's the best. I especially like the lingo from the 20s. It has nothing to do with derbies, but it is fun. I Let's take a moment, though, and run through the race lingo. So as they talk about it during the TV broadcast, you can understand what the hell they're talking about. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Win. You win if your horse finishes first place. Place. You win if your horse finishes anywhere in the top two. Show. You win if your horse finishes anywhere in the top three. Exacta. Now we're getting into the fun words. Mm -hmm. You win if you can correctly pick the first place and the second place horses in the correct order. Box exacta. You win if you can correctly pick the first place and second place horses 
in any order. So they're just kind of boxed in in those top two. Trifecta. You win if you can correctly pick the first place, second place, and third place horses in the correct order. Mm. Box trifecta. Okay, this is kind of like the box effecta. This is like playing poker. Yeah. You win for the box trifecta if you win if you can correctly pick the first, second, and third place horses in any order. Just somewhere boxed in in that section. Super effecta. <laughs> You win if you can correctly pick the first, second, third, and fourth place horses in the correct order. Box Superfecta. You win if you can correctly pick the first, second, third, and fourth horses in any order. Duet. You win if the two horses you select both finish anywhere in the top three places. Hmm. Double. You win if you successfully pick the winner of two consecutive races. Triple. You win if you successfully pick the winner of three consecutive races. <laughs> Quaddy. That one throw you a little bit? I thought it said quadiddle. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell kind of word is quadiddle? Oh, shizzle the quadiddle, yo! Honestly, quaddy is not <laughs> better. So I kind of prefer quadiddle. You win if you successfully pick the winner of four predetermined races at the same track on the same day. Pick six. You win if you successfully pick the winner of six predetermined races on the same day. Points. What? There is no points. I just like saying the word points. Because Coach Dan makes yes, fun of you. Yes, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. So that was the race lingo and goes with all the games and stuff. But, you know, Derby Day is not just watching the races. It's not just wearing goofy hats. It's not just playing games and betting or wagering or whatever. Come on. It's a southern thing. It's about food. There's food. It's the food. The food needs to be small plates. It needs to be bite-sized. It needs mm -hmm. to be perfect for grazing throughout the day while you're socializing and taking a bite between points in the conversation. Finger foods. Something you can have while you're being social. It's something not just like let me on a cute I mean it never mind. What? You don't want to just Show, you know, it shouldn't be something a moment of everyone silent toothpick. while they're shoving food in their face. Yes, it should be something you put in a toothpick. But not a Q-tip. <laughs> not a Q-tip. Oh, my God. That's disgusting. Um, it also is about the cocktails or mocktails. Mocktails. If you're yes. not so inclined. Those also should be light, herbaceous, floral. Think spring. Channel what is seasonal. The classic, of course, for the cocktails is the mint julep. Mm -hmm. And because we're doing a low-carb episode, the mint julep low-carb edition would be four sprigs of mint or more, if you're like me, and like lots of mint in there, three ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of zero-sugar uh, simple syrup, and then you're going to garnish with a fresh uh, mint sprig. And to make this, you put all your mint leaves and simple syrup in a glass. You muddle them well, which muddle is like if you've got a spoon or if you've got a muddling stick. Go in there and crush them. Release those essential oils that are already in those leaves. Then you add crushed ice. You pour in your bourbon. You give it a stir, and you garnish with a sprig of mint. And then um, there you And then go. you drink it. And then you sip on it. I'm uh, mm -hmm. one-third of the way through mine so far. How are you doing? I'm halfway through mine. Holy crap. I drink faster than you do. Oh, yes, you do. And then I go to sleep. But so here's what we're going to do for the rest of this episode, at least a big chunk of the rest of this episode, mm -hmm. is we're going to do four more rounds. I mean, the, the mint julep. You got to talk about the mint julep. So for we sure. did. But we're going to do four rounds. Each round, you're going to do a menu item and yeah. a cocktail. And I'm going to do a menu item and a cocktail. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we're going to have eight menu items and eight cocktails. Cool. Um, but when we've done parties in the past, we've actually put out a uh, multiple menu cards. Yeah. Laminated Or at cards. least, yes. <laughs> recipe cards on drink recipes. We've put out a whole big spread of food. And we put all the ingredients. So people made their own cocktails, but at least they had the ingredient sheets mm -hmm. and the recipe sheets. Right there, ready to go. Yeah. So Jessica, as we dive into this, low-carb recipes round one. And, and by the way, as we go through this, we're not necessarily saying the, the food item pairs with the cocktail. No. But whatever. It's a suggestion. So round, low carb recipes, round one, so you can do your derby day and keep your low carb diet going if you're so inclined. Yep. Here we go. Jessica, you're up first. 
cucumber sandwiches. Okay, how are you doing this? Because bread is so carb heavy, and if you're trying to go low carb, how do you make it work? Cucumbers. Oh, you're not putting them in You the don't sandwiches. put them into bread. No, you get rid of the bread, and you actually just use cucumbers as your bread. Okay. So what you're going to need is an English cucumber sliced into discs, cream cheese that's softened, chives or green onions diced, sharp cheddar cheese sliced into thin one-inch squares. So you're going to take your cucumber slices and add the cream cheese, green onions, and cheddar. Sandwich the cucumber, so one on top of the other with the cream cheese in the middle, and then repeat. Make a whole bunch of little tiny sandwiches out of it. Um, variations, you can add bacon squares or ham into it as well. We've actually done this with um, lox, and that is equally yummy and also low carb. So, yes, it is. Yeah, I really, I really like the cucumber sandwiches. They're good. Also, if you take a cute, I, I mean, actually like these better also, than if you take the a traditional... toothpick and you stick it in the middle, it stays together a little bit better. I like these more than the traditional cucumber sandwiches because this literally yeah, is because... a cucumber sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you have for round one? Well, I also thought you were going to do your cocktail. Oh, I have to do too. my drink too. Oh, yeah, I do your drink. I'm so sorry. So, you know, we already did the mint julep, which is traditional Kentucky Derby. But, like, what a lot of people don't know is, well, that's the Saturday main event. The main event on Friday is the Kentucky Oaks. And the Kentucky Oaks is where the three-year-old girls run, where the mm-hmm. three-year-old boys are running in the Kentucky Derby. Or sometimes some girls make it in. But Do they? Yeah. Oh. Well, what, rarely. But what is what drink officially goes with the Kentucky Oaks? The Oaks Lily. And what is our low-carb version of the lo- Oaks I Lily? I will tell you. It's Please do. Two ounces of vodka and what? four ounces of water, cranberry, raspberry, mio, lemonade, mio, and then you're going to garnish with blackberry and lemon wedge. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your vodka, your water, and a light squeeze of the lemonade mio and a strong squeeze of the cranberry mio in your ice-filled mixing vessel, so a glass, and you're going to shake it or up. Or shaker. Whatever. We got a mason jar Vessel shaker. Vessel. It's very sounds appropriate. Sounds like a boat. Don't drink a boat full of vodka. <laughs> you'll get sick. Um, you're going to shake it up really well. And then you're going to strain it into a glass filled with crushed ice. Garnish, drink, and enjoy. What do you have for round number one? I mean, I know this is not a favorite of yours. But nope. I, it's just not the Kentucky Derby for me without this. And that is pimento cheese. Everybody loves it except for me. There's a ton of pimento cheese recipes out there. They're almost all fit in with the low-carb recipe for the most part. Some actually include uh, all-purpose flour, which adds unnecessary carbs. You don't need them. I'm not a big fan of just adding calories and macros for the, no reason mm-hmm. uh, when they don't add any flavor. So... To do this, look, you can do use one small jar of roasted red bell peppers. If you want to go all out, take a bell, fresh bell pepper. If you got a gas stove, roast it, burn the hell out of that thing, peel the skin off of it. It's a lot of extra work. It's fun, though. It's fun it to is peel a lot all of fun. the skin off of Set that. Set off your smoke detectors, whatever. Or you can buy a jar of uh, roasted red bell peppers. You need eight ounces of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. That's about two cups. You need eight ounces of uh, shredded Monterey Jack cheese. That's about two cups. Four ounces of cream cheese. You're going to want that soft, and so just set it out for a while to get up to room temperature. You need a half cup of uh, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Hellman's, Dukes, whatever. You want Hellman's. Or Dukes. Hellman's. Or you like the South. You like Dukes. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Uh, two cloves of garlic, and you want that crushed. Uh, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper and one teaspoon of salt. Place the garlic in a food processor and pulse it until it's well chopped up in, in little tiny bits. Add everything else. Pulse until well blended and looking. you're looking for a mix, not a uniform, homogenous sludge. You really do want those bits of the roasted red pepper. That's your pimentos. Uh, in there, you don't want it completely liquefied. Mm-mm. But you don't also, at the same time, you don't want chunks of cream cheese here and chunks of er- the other ingredients here. Get it mixed up. Put it in a bowl and then refrigerate it for at least one to two hours and just to let it set up and let those flavors really meld. And then when you serve it, look, if you're going low carb, serve it with cucumber discs, serve it with 
There's various little cheese crisps, so you can find recipes for cheese crisps online. If you don't care about any of that crap, have it on a normal cracker. <laughs> You're hilarious. Put it on a saltine. Who cares? But if you are watching your carbs... <laughs> do the do the uh, cheese crisp thing. There's the little wisps, the little yeah, cheese the crisps, wisps. or it is good on celery sticks, carrot sticks, or cucumber discs. Mm-hmm. It actually, it's even good on a good radish stick or... Dip. Who's eating radish discs? Nobody's eating radishes. Uh, Gross. Uh, I do. They taste like pepper. They do taste like pepper. They add a pepper to it. All right. My uh, my What's round one. My round one. The round one drink. Uh, I was experimenting with this the other night, and I um I'm actually gonna post this on our Instagram tomorrow, from when we're recording this because it's Friday night and it's been a long ass week and. Um, so by the time we just post, it's already been up on our Instagram, but it is a blueberry sage julep. There's various versions out there online and they usually involve a, uh, blueberry simple syrup that's sugar heavy and it's dark blue. And sometimes it's artificially dyed and that's just no fun. So with ours to keep the low carb piece to it, or at least the low net carbs, Two ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of zero sugar simple syrup. We like the Tarani brand, but that's because we can find it on Amazon and it's easy for us. We're not sponsored by them. Nope. Two uh, sage leaves, which in our case we're growing in our herb garden out on our deck. Six to eight blueberries. And you're going to garnish this at the end with a sage sprig and one to two more blueberries. To make it, you're going to muddle your sage leaves and your blueberries in your mixing glass or shaker. Once they're all crushed up and you've released all the oils and flavors and everything, add your ice, add your bourbon, add your simple syrup, and shake it up. Shake, 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 shake. You know, getting a little exercise here. Strain into a glass that's filled with crushed ice. Garnish with the, with the uh, sage sprig that I mentioned before. And then put a blueberry or two on top. And there you go. You're all set. Yeah. It will be kind of brownish in color. It will not be that vibrant purpley b- blue color. But you know what? Less artificial uh, dyes and everything. It's probably Great good flavors. For you. There you go. Jessica, round two of our low carb recipes. Round what are you done? two. Oh, I'm... wait, I'm up first. Oh, haha, that's ha. So for my round two, I'm going with goat cheese jalapeno poppers. I mean, jalapeno poppers are very popular. These things you can swing by, you can grab one. It's great. But I want to really mix the jalapeno popper with the goat cheese stuff. These are sweet good. peppers. They are yummy. You will like them. Make them. <laughs> Feed so, them to your friends. So for these, you're going to need goat cheese. And of course, we like just getting the big logs of goat cheese from Costco. Costco. Because we've got four kids. and Costco. Know, yeah. We need jalapenos. And if you're not looking for something spicy, go with the sweet cherry peppers. And then for toppers, there's a lot of different options. You can go with bacon if you crisp that up and chop it into bits. You can get green onions or chives. That's optional. Uh, You can drizzle aged balsamic vinegar over the top, or you can even put some pico de gallo over the top. Whatever you want to go over the top. Anyway, to make these, turn on your oven's broiler. Let it heat up. Get some residual heat in there as well. While it's heating up, have and seed your peppers. You're basically turning them into little boats. Place parchment paper on a cooking pan. Fill your peppers with goat cheese. Place under a broiler for two to six minutes. Keep an eye on them because when they, you know, you want to get a little browning on top and crisp them up, but you don't want it to get too bad, even a little bubbling. Not too much. It's going to depend on the thickness of the uh, the peppers and how much cheese you put in and your broiler. Uh, and then when you take out, Top it, whether you're drizzling the uh, olive oil on top or you're putting the onions on top or dr- putting bacon on top, whatever. Have fun with it. But they are quite good. And it's different than the usual like cream cheese cheddar mix in a jalapeno popper. I mean, Jess, you don't even like spicy food and you like these. I do. But the jalapenos aren't too spicy and the goat cheese adds a nice richness to it. And it's just, I don't know, it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I love, especially the aged balsamics that are aged in like whiskey barrels too. Mm -hmm. So that adds the whole, brings into the derby piece too. It has some interesting flavors. Yeah. 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 Uh, My round two drink is the 
Gentleman Johnson. This name is hilarious. <laughs> yes, it is. I want you to know that. I, I am aware. The Gentleman Johnson is two ounces of bourbon, five ounces of unsweetened iced tea, a quarter to a half ounce of sugar sweet simple syrup. Uh, we like the Toronto, Toronto band, blah, brand because we can get it on uh, Costco or not Costco. We get it on Amazon, but it's optional. And it's mainly if you prefer more of a sweet tea, uh, especially for me in the South. It took me a long time to get out of that habit. <laughs> and then an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of orange extract. And that's replacing your um, triple sec. You're going to garnish it with a lemon wedge and a mint sprig. So to make this, it's really simple. You fill the glass with ice. You add all the ingredients. You stir. You garnish. That's it. You drink it. And if you're so inclined, you nice. have another. It has a hilarious name, and it's fast and easy. That's great. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Jessica, what do you have for round two? <gasps> round two. I've got... Mason jar meat cheese board. Oh my god, this is so perfect this for the COVID so day. Fun. If you want to have a party in the age of COVID, right? This is perfect because people aren't. You don't have a buffet line right. or anything or nope. a meat board that everyone's choosing from. You still get to enjoy your charcuterie board. Yes, that's important. Or your fromage board. Your fromage. Okay, so you want to have some meats cut into chunks or cubes. So ham, salami, turkey breast, etc. Whatever it is you like. Meat sticks cut into chunks, whatever. Probably not meat sticks. Those you can do meat sticks. Salty. It doesn't matter. Fine. Especially I mean, when you go to like the farmer's market and they get some fun meat sticks there. Yeah. Actually, yeah, those are really good. Um, Some cheeses. Pardon me, my cut, cheese on ice. Cut into chunks. Cheddar, Colby, Gouda, Blue, etc. Brie. Yum. You could do brie. So good. Have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you're also going to want to have some vegetables in there. So olives, raw bell pepper strips, celery sticks, small radish discs. N- no, don't put those in. Those are gross. Those are great. They're not. Baby carrots, etc. Cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes. Yeah. Cucumbers. Yeah. Get rid of the radish. Put the cucumbers in there. Anyways. Radish has a nice little pepper piece to it. I do like radish. Maybe cut those into tiny triangles and stick those in there. The circle upset you? It's just too much. <laughs> because it's, it's a circle? It's too much radish. It's too big. Okay. Anyways, you're going to put all your ingredients in a mason jar, make it look pretty, so you could like layer it, or you could put... Anyway, you guys know how to you decorate. You want to be a high we roller? To do put a of stick this. of bacon, or a strip of bacon sticking out of it. People will just yank the bacon out of all well, the Well, you're going to all this. Because you can put it all in the mason jar mm-hmm. to make it look pretty. Serve it with a bamboo. I'm stir. reading this! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and drink my cocktail. Do that! Yeah, fish your, your thing. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to put all your ingredients into a mason jar. Make it look pretty. Put some bacon in it, apparently. And then you're going to it, serve it with bamboo skewers or fondue fork. And that way you can just walk around with your little jar of a charcuterie board and you can poke it and eat it and and there's no transfer of germs everything is fine and honestly you're not going to run out of food this way it's a single serving charcuterie board it's fantastic so yeah that's how that's how the mason jar meat and cheese board works country chic yeah next no no your cocktail my cocktail thank you i am for this one i'm going to be making the blush lily and like you're blushing right now I oh you're just turning red I'm because you're drinking, drinking alcohol that just happened just is did your Anyways, drink refill itself i brought down my ginger ale <laughs> your uh, to water zero down calorie my, my drink okay i was like wondering like how did you go from like a third of a glass to almost being full i have the special bra that has the uh class <laughs> built into it that you can take into like football you did, stadiums you know what you did go to florida state i did i learned some tricks i don't actually have that bra but it is a real thing you can we did buy have it. the friend who had the special hidden line and like faux liner in her purse yep. so she could put flasks and actually airline you don't even need a special purse for that you know just... i went in there with like cargo shorts no, to go to football games that's at not what state. i was gonna say that, like i had to wear a belt just so my pants didn't fall off i had so much alcohol no. in my shorts what I was going to say is that you don't need a special purse. You can actually just take a crappy purse, cut the liner, and put the bottles underneath the liner, and then just open up your purse so they can check it, and they'll never see it. Um. Anyways, my drink is the Blush Lily, and it consists of three ounces of vodka, six ounces of water, 
a half ounce of zero sugar simple syrup, two ounces of fresh lime juice, and an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of orange extract, and a little bit of crab, cranberry raspberry meo. Crab meo? Crabberry. Do they make crab meo? Only in Maryland, probably. It's probably only released in the Baltimore area. <laughs> it's cranberry raspberry meo. That shouldn't it's even old be spice a real flavored. thing. Oh, my God. Just ignore everything I said. Old Spice or Old Bay? Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to fill your cocktail shaker with ice. Add all the ingredients. Cover, shake, and strain into a glass filled with crushed ice. And then you're going to drink the crap out of it. I hope our listeners are like figuring out that these are not exactly highly technical cocktails. Good Lord, no. These are That's, ones you can do after you've had a few other cocktails. You should not have highly complicated cocktails to not on Derby while Day. you're doing Derby Day parties. No, like, you quickly mix a drink. It, it should be fun, flavorable, be fun you easy. know, herbaceous, something, a conversation piece mm-hmm. while you're munching on your food and having conversations and talking about what's going on yes. and whatever else. And Absolutely. Oh, my God, is school almost done? And, like, what's your kid doing for spring concert or spring sports? And is it summer yet? And, yeah. All that spring stuff. concert. Yeah. Oh, we got, oh, I know. We got spring concert coming up. Kid One was talking about it. By the way, have you listened to the last episode yet? No. No. Oh, are you going to? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Lots of insights. I'm on a what, busy girl. Yes. Well, while you're driving to work. Listen. I can't listen to it while I'm driving because I get lost when I listen to <laughs> podcasts because I stop paying attention to where I'm going. I used to listen to a whole bunch of photography podcasts and I was like, these are hilarious. I'm learning so much. Where the hell am I? It's taking you two and a half hours to make your 40 minute drive to work. Yes. I, this is not a joke. This is like something that actually happens to me regularly when I listen to podcasts. So I can't do it in the car. Sorry, lovey. Well, all right. At some point, listen to it because your sixth grade daughter gave all sorts of insights into what's going on in sixth grade life. It was hilarious. I, don't know if I, I mean, it was hilarious. It was insightful. It was like. Mixed emotions as podcast host slash dad slash, yeah. Yeah. Lots of going on. Um, in the middle school? In the middle school. In the uh, sixth grade. You need to know what's going on in math class. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Math? No. <laughs> is it Kinda. Math? I don't like math. So apparently math class is the most chaotic class she has. Really? Oh, yeah. Why? You need to listen in. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Episode, uh, what was that episode? 58? 39? What episode are we on now? 40. No, we're not. On it says 40. No. 58. F- episode 58 is the one you need to okay. listen to that relates back to- a like, very big typo. Yes. I realize on the, the outline I made for tonight, it says 40, but we are on episode, this is episode 59. <laughs> 58 is the one I did with your daughter, <laughs> my daughter, our daughter. Yeah. Uh, she so that was the last one that also relates to the craziness and the uh, stupidity of adult hockey, mm-hmm. quote unquote, adult hockey um, and other things of adults who don't act like adults. That was episode 58, episode 59. This is I obviously used okay. a outline from episode now for that this. we have established what number this is. Let's get back to Derby Day. Derby Day, round three. Round three. Ready? Here we go. You're up first. Yep. This one's long. What are we doing for get food? Get ready. Yeah. Hot chicken taquitos. I mean, taquitos. Tennessee hot, Nashville hot chicken is a big thing. And Louisville, Kentucky, and Churchill Downs is not too far away. Taquitos. Taquitos. So good. Okay. You're going to need one and a half to two pounds of chicken thighs, a quarter cup of chicken broth, Eight ounces, a eight ounce bag of shredded taco cheese, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, a quarter teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper, half a tablespoon of smoked paprika, or just regular paprika. Nope, you, don't you want the smoked. You don't. You do. You don't. You do. Hot sauce, dough, Tabasco, Crystal, etc. Actually, just go with Tabasco because Crystal's gross. Go with Crystal. Don't. Low- I, lo- I love the crystal. Low carb tortillas. You can absolutely find those in most grocery stores at this point. If not, Amazon is going to be your best friend for that. You know what? Though? We can find it at all our local grocery stores of the various brands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cooking spray slash olive oil and then pickle slices slash 
pickle relish for keep topping. an eye on that though yep, because those can have can a lot of a lot of high carbs and they don't need to be so just look watch at the, your brands yeah watch your brands look at your nutritional labeling because mm-hmm. some of them throw in unnecessarily throw in extra sugar yep all right so and obviously you want dill not bread and butter yeah yeah i suppose all right so directions you're going to mix up your dry seasonings and then you're going to rub your raw chicken thighs evenly. Looks, <laughs> okay, does that sound funny. dirty to you? It just it says rub raw chicken thighs. <laughs> like we're well, going to rub them raw because we we they... are triathletes. We do biking and running and swimming and sometimes our thighs get rubbed okay, raw. So first put on deodorant. <laughs> oh god. Or something. <laughs> and then... gold bond? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. So Don't put gold bond in your food. Don't. <laughs> oh my god. You'll die. <laughs> but have a good laugh about rubbing those thighs. Okay, but you are going to put both you, inner and outer. You are going to put this rub that you just made onto your raw chicken thighs. And, and it's called rub for a reason because you got to rub it in. And then you're going to do it evenly. Let me read. It's like behavior Stop analysts. Interrupting me. We do it consistently. Great. Here's your feedback. <laughs> okay. Stop interrupting me and let me read this damn thing so we can go to bed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> After you rub your chicken thighs raw, <laughs> you're going to... <laughs> no, after you rub your raw chicken thighs. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. You're going to place them into your slow cooker and you're going to pour in the broth. Cook on high for two to two and a half hours. Take the chicken out and shred it and then preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Line a baking dish with parchment paper. Okay, now it's time to assemble your taquitos. So, you're going to add the shredded chicken, cheese, and hot sauce into a tortilla. Then you're going to roll it up. and A it little should... of each, not like all of it. Yeah, no, the whole not recipe. the whole thing. You don't want to make a big honking taquito. That won't taste good. Little tiny ones, like a little bit per taco shell, okay? Um, you're going to you're going to make it about one to one and a half inches thick when it's rolled, and then you're going to place it on your baking dish. When the dish is filled, single layer, spray lightly with cooking spray or olive oil, and then you're going to bake it for about ten minutes until it's golden brown and the cheese has melted. I mean, your chicken's already cooked, yeah, so you're really cooked. only you're melting the cheese and You're just trying to brown the tortilla and melt the cheese, and it's going to be wonderfully delicious. And then. When it's done and you pull it out of the oven and stick it on a plate, you can garnish it with pickle relish or pickle slices. And your pickle slices or your pickle relish are really replacing that pico de gallo, black olives, everything you would normally put on top. But also, like, if you prefer having pico or black olives, you can absolutely do that, too. Right, but you're trying to keep the Kentucky theme, southern theme going. Yeah. Okay, but cool. Screw it. It's just food and you're trying to like I just really balance like, out all the alcohol you're having over the cross of the day. Or I really mocktails. like tomatoes, so I would go for the pico. Look, but it's good to have something in your stomach. It's okay. food you gotta eat. Right. I need to what, eat now. Whoa, what's your drink that goes with this? My drink has such a fun name. Are you ready? Sure. It's called the Pegasus Cup. <laughs> okay. It's got wings. It's <laughs> oh God. Um, it sounds like something you should be winning in some sort of championship on Winged horses, Harry Potter style. Harry Potter. There we go. There okay. we go. Ready? Yeah. What's for a this, Pegasus cup? For this drink, this magnificent flying drink, you are going to need two ounces yeah, of... Yeah, you'll be flying after a few of these. <laughs> You're going to need two ounces of vodka, a half ounce of zero sugar simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice, two slices Don't of... Don't screw around with the pre-made stuff in the store. No, just mush your own lemons. I mean limes. <laughs> mush your Citrus. own limes. Two slices of cucumber, six fresh mint leaves, Prosecco or club soda, whatever you prefer. Well, I mean, Prosecco is what you traditionally would use, but the club, if you're really ho- militant about being low carb, okay, then you're going to want club, the club soda, soda will keep your carbs down. You want, you just need carb. to a little bit of bubbles is all. Exactly. Garnish with a cucumber slice and a mint sprig. So you're going to muddle your mint and your cucumber, and then you're going to add vodka, lime juice, and simple syrup. And then top with the ice and shake. Strain into a glass and then top with a Prosecco or club soda. Do not put your Prosecco or do club soda in before you shake that. or you're making a bomb. You are going to make an explosion in your pretty kitchen that you've cleaned so nicely to host your guests in. And they'll all get a big laugh out of it and you'll have to redo the whole drink. 
Then you're going to garnish with a cucumber slice and a mint sprig. Oh, my Woo-hoo! God. I remember the time we cleaned our kitchen. We were getting ready to hold a Kentucky Derby party. And mm. all of a sudden, there's this weird smell in the kitchen. We're like, what the hell is that? No. Was it a mouse? Yeah. Was it a derby party or a Christmas party? I don't I'm remember. pretty sure it was a derby party. And, like, the whole house stunk. F- yes, it was a... Yes. And then we it pulled... It was a derby party uh, and, then, like, and it was it a stinks, damn mouse. It stinks over by the stove. And we pulled out, like, is there a dead mouse underneath the stove? We pulled the stove out. And up where the outlet was, because we have we have a gas r- stove, but it does plug into the wall for the you know the electronics to control the whole thing. And in where the outlet was, where the stove plugged into the wall, a mouse had climbed in and gotten itself fried. Because he, yep, he stuck his little foot right into the outlet hole, <laughs> and he fried himself, and he stunk up our house. Fortunately, we found him a couple days before the party, so we were able no, no, to- no, no, we found him a couple hours before the party. No, 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 it was the day of. Luckily, it was a derby party. We had all the windows open to the house, and we had fans going. Like, oh my god, let's clear this this stench out. Yeah. What do you have for <laughs> round three? Like, there is no good segue from this. So let's maybe go back to food and drinks. All right. Well, sip on your Pegasus cup and listen to this, because mine is also <laughs> for round three. Very involved, much like Jessica's. This is also the heavier part of the meal. But it's just not a derby party without a, uh, you know, you had to have your pimento cheese that I mentioned in the first round. You also need to have your Kentucky hot brown sandwiches. But those are also carb heavy. So I've got a low carb take on that. And to make this, you need either low carb buns, which you are be able to get like at most of the grocery stores. The ones that's flat out say keto on them mm-hmm. or low carb or low net carb. But you know what? You can also off of Amazon get uh, Carb Quick, which is kind of like a Bisquick. Only yeah, it's reduced great. Carb. It is great. And you can make drop biscuits out of that. So you either need the low-carb buns or the Carb Quick, quick drop biscuits that you made at home. Mm-hmm. Make those ahead of time. In addition, you need thin-sliced turkey, crispy bacon strips, sharp cheddar cheese, or Gouda or Fontina or something that's going to melt. You need cheese. 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 Four tablespoons of butter. Yes, that's a lot of butter. Just stick with me. One tablespoon of Parmesan cheese, whether that's into flakes or shredded. Two cloves of garlic minced up nice and small. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Line a baking dish with foil. And then you're going to put parchment paper over the top. And that is for easy removal of your hot browns. The parchment paper part is... The foil is for easy cleanup later because I'm a dude and that's how <laughs> I <we> think. I'm a dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Slice your buns or your biscuits in half. Pile in your turkey and cheese and bacon to the thickness and you know quantity you want. Place them all together in the baking dish. You want to minimize the gaps. You want them right up against each other. In a small pot on the stovetop, you're going to melt the butter and the Parmesan. Mix that all together. Add the garlic and stir for one more minute after you add the garlic. Pour that over the top of the sandwiches and place in the oven. You're going to put it in there for 10 to 15 minutes or until the tops are golden brown and the cheese is melted. That's all you're going to do. Pull it out. It's ready to go. People can come by, you know, put foil over the top. Yep. Keep them warm. People are going to come by, grab a sandwich, and go put it on their little plate, and they're going to schmooze and talk and look schmooze. at the races and have enjoyed cocktails and have a little food in there to soak up all the booze in their stomachs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To go along, uh, well, along with round three, not necessarily along with this course, uh, I have the Bufala Negra. Bufala? Well, um, I mean, hell, my name is Marco Tomasi, so I had to do something Italian. So this is Italian for the black buffalo. But the bufala negra is a two ounces of bourbon, one teaspoon, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of aged balsamic vinegar. I prefer a aged balsamic that has been aged in whiskey barrels. Mm-hmm. A half ounce of zero sugar simple syrup. Again, we like the Tarani because uh, it's Amazon. This is COVID years in screw it we have like four kids and who has time to go to the store not us yeah one and a half ounces of sugar-free ginger ale chilled Mm -hmm. 
and four basil leaves, which we pull right out of our herb garden on our deck, right yep. off our kitchen. Muddle three of the basil leaves with the vinegar and the simple syrup in your mixing vessel. Add ice and the bourbon. Shake well. Shake it up. There's your workout. Shake Strain into a glass that is half filled with ice. Add the ginger ale and stir. Be sure your ginger ale is not in your mixing vessel or you're making a bomb that's going to explode in your face. <laughs> Garnish with the remaining basil leaf. Very herbaceous and fun. Herbaceous. Herbaceous. And, and it's tasty. Tasty. And it's got the bourbon thing going for the Kentucky Derby. Indeed. Jessica, we're almost done for tonight. And again, like this was really difficult setting this one up because there's so many different foods we've done over the years. There's so many foods we like to do with this. Uh, I didn't want to do everything in one episode because, hell, I mean, the podcast is already, we're in our, starting our second year of this. Mm -hmm. So this might become an annual thing. Uh, but Jessica, round four, I guess I'm up first, aren't I? Yep. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. I mean, I can go if you want. No, no, no. I'll go round four. We laid out on the outline that I would I would start round four. Round four is pork belly street tacos. Because Woo! pork it's, belly. I mean, it's come so on. So good. It's Kentucky. You want it's to eat pork. it. Pork. It's it's like bacon, but fattier. So uh, you're going to want three to four pounds of pork belly. I know that sounds like, but it's really going to reduce down. Yeah. It's going to really give out a lot of fat. Uh, and honestly, for our Costco, at least, it sells pork belly strips in the three to four pound range is mm -hmm. what a one pack is. Yep. Plus, we got a bunch of kids. And even our kid who hates bacon. She will eat she pork She loves belly. pigs. She's got a picture of a pig on her wall. Actually, several. She hates bacon. She loves these pork belly tacos. So uh, pork, three to four pounds of pork belly, one cup of chicken stock, a quarter to a half cup of hot sauce. Depends on how spicy you want this. You're going to want low-carb tortillas again. Yeah. Ideally, the small ones if you can get them, but if not, any size works. You're going to want pico de gallo. That's optional. Arugula of lettuce is optional as well. Taco cheese is optional if you want tacos. Sour cream is optional if you want sour cream on your tacos. Cilantro is optional if you want that as well. You want these to be the really, you don't want a full burrito size taco. Speak for yourself. Yeah. You want small, small street tacos. These are things like palm sized tacos, but you know, it depends on what low carb options you have available. If you're doing the low carb thing, otherwise mm -hmm. uh, the street taco size is very it's much perfect. available. Yeah. What you do is uh, at least from our Costco, the pork belly comes pre-sliced. Yeah. And it's about a inch wide long strips. Mm -hmm. But if not, slice it up into strips that are about an inch wide. Toss the pork belly with your hot sauce in a bowl. Place the onions roughly chopped into big chunks. Uh, your garlic that you've taken the cloves, you've smashed them. And the stock, put those in the bottom of your slow cooker. Top the uh, pork belly on top of it. Cover it and cook it on low for eight hours. It's going to reduce and it's going to let out a lot of fat, a lot of jus, and it's going to be, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to have a lot of flavor. After the eight hours are up, and this is where we differ on, on opinion, but if you want a crispier pork belly, put it under the broiler for five minutes. If you like a softer pork belly like Jess does, it's ready to serve. After it comes out from under the broiler, Take it out and build your tacos with whatever toppings you want, whether that's the, you know, you take your tortilla and whether you want to put pico de gallo, arugula, taco cheese, sour cream, cilantro, whatever you want right on it. For us, we got cilantro going in our herb garden mm -hmm. because one of us likes cilantro and one of us absolutely hates it. Because it tastes like soap. There you go. Uh, my drink for my round four, my final drink of the night, final is a drink. lavender gin sour, which I actually put up on our okay, Instagram story a while back. Is it purple? It is not purple in color, but it's got, because that would be a bunch of fake dye and everything. <laughs> but it's got real lavender in it. Mm -hmm. And it will continue, we'll continue doing this, at least I'll continue doing this all summer, as long as the 
damn black squirrels don't keep um, tearing up my <laughs> pot that has to. like it. such an old man. I am an old Ooh, man. Oh, damn squirrels. Damn squirrels. I can uh, get you that But book. the pot that keep digging squirrels. into, the one with pothole, the frog in it, is the one where my lavender and my chamomile are growing in. And so to make this, one ounce of fresh lime juice, one ounce of fresh lemon juice, one ounce of sugar-free simple syrup, four ounces of gin, two ounces of lavender sprigs, and it garnishes a, an additional lavender sprig. I'm sorry, not two ounces, but two lavender sprigs. To make this, you muddle the two lavender sprigs with the lime juice and the lemon juice in your shaking vessel, whatever. Us, it's usually a mason jar. Add your uh, simple syrup, gin, and ice. Shake it up, strain into a glass filled with crushed ice. Garnish with a lavender sprig, and that's it. It's springy, it's herbaceous, it's got a little purple hints to it. It's great. 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 Jessica, you're falling asleep on me. What is your so final tired. dish of the night? It is deviled eggs, because it is quintessential it derby is essential, food. You it, have to have it. How do you make your deviled eggs? All right. For my deviled eggs, you're going to need... What? What's the meme? It's like, eat, eat 12 eggs. No. No. Fill them with mayonnaise and mustard. All Damn it, eggs. I'll eat them all. All 24 of the eggs. Yeah. Anyways, for my eggs, you are going to need 12 large eggs, a half a cup of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of dill radish. Nope. One tablespoon of dill. What is dill radish? That's not a thing because radishes are gross. No, they're not. They're nice and peppery. And great. You're going to need one tablespoon of dill relish, two teaspoons of yellow mustard, Salt and pepper to taste, paprika for garnish, and chives or green onions for garnish. Look, okay. If you want to make this a little bit more funky, take the yellow mustard and make it more of a brown mustard. No. Yeah. Just don't. Whatever. Don't mess with my recipe. Fine. My Go eggs with it. are great. Go with it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of your eggs. You're going to put the eggs into a single layer of a large pot, cover in cold water two to three inches above the top of the eggs, bring to a boil over high heat, and then when the water is boiling like a rolling boil, you're going to want to cover up your pot and then remove it from the heat. Let the egg sit for mm, somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes. Then you're going to, once that timer is up, you're going to camp carefully transfer your eggs into a bowl filled with ice water and allow them to cool. I like to wait until most of the cubes have actually melted before I take them out so that I can be sure that the cooking process has been stopped and they are happily chilling in that ice bath. Do they have little smiley faces? They for sure do. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Once they're cool, you're going to crack them and gently peel the well, eggs. Well, they break out the sunglasses and they're cool. <laughs> Gently peel the eggs, cut in half lengthwise, remove the yolk, and place it into a medium bowl. Add the mayo, mustard, relish, salt, and pepper to the yolks. Mash the yolks with a fork or a really fun mashed potato masher, and then mix really well. Spoon them back. No, not with a spoon. If you're making eggs for a party and you want it to look nice, what you need to do is you need to get a piping bag with a fun um, decorator tip on it. I like the star tips for this, and then you're going to pipe them back into your eggs, and they're going to be beautiful, and then you can garnish them with your chives or your green onions. And or if your name is... sprinkle a little name, bit of paprika on it, and they will be fantastically amazing eggs. If your name is Marco... Then, then you use a then, spoon. Then use a spoon, and you just lump them in there, and good enough. Good Trust me, enough. I'm a doctor. No. Yes, I am. You want your eggs to be pretty, and the best way to do that is with a piping bag and a star tip. That might be the case, but I'm still a doctor. I hate you. I know. I hate you so much. We have the most amazing marriage. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I could have stayed at Western. I could have done it. You could have gone to Utah State. They nope. wanted you too. I could have just <laughs> gone to Western and done it. Yeah, I know. Oh, I love you. Hmm. You just get so mad because I get to use that line. I'm going to beat you one day. Uh, you beat me quite often. Okay. My drink to go with my very last recipe of the night. It has a super fun name. Are yeah. you ready? What is it? A horse's neck. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of one current high school cross country or sorry, track coach who needs this one. Oh, man. Because like. No doubt. 
did you see what the weather was no. like on Wednesday? And she yeah, had to go I went coaching to work, it? and then I had to stare it at it snowed, like this. It snowed, and she had to track me. Well, tough Better her than me. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Know. Okay. Uh, so she needs a horse's neck. Lots and of them. Maybe like a horse's body. I don't know. A horse's butt? That's a... Body. Oh, we need to make a drink called a horse's butt. It's a really big drink. No, we're not going to make a horse's butt. I've seen what her <laughs> horses can do with their butts, and no thank you. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I really hope she listens to this episode. Horse's neck is yeah. the name of the drink, and these are the It names- is a classic drink, by the way. Oh my God. We didn't just create this one. Low cut. We did in the low cut version. Shut up and do your drink. I'm trying to. Okay. You shut up. <laughs> we need two ounces of bourbon, a splash of zero sugar ginger ale, very cold. That's important. And then you're going to garnish with a lemon pool peel. Nope. I did this for the other night. And, and then I, you're you going to garnish. Than a splash. You got like fifty percent. You're going to garnish with a lemon peel. So you're going to pour your bourbon and your ginger ale into a glass, and then you're going to stir it, and then you're going to garnish it with that lemon peel, and then you're going to drink it. The end. And you're going to like it. You are going to like it. Whether Although, you want to or not, you're going to like it. It's called a horse's neck. So <laughs> like, how could you not like it? Again, we didn't Fun name names. this one. This is a classic drink. Mm-hmm. Jessica, all right, we've run through all these. We've got the food out there. We've got the drinks out there. We've got the games. We've got the attire. But at the end of the day, what are the big tape takeaways? What are the big Derby Day tips that they need to remember? What are the top five Derby Day tips we have for everybody? Make as much as possible ahead of time so that you can relax and enjoy your party. No like it's it sucks if you're still running around like a chicken with your head cut off uh in preparation for your party right before people start showing up we did that one year it was not fun but much a lot better of these, to like, have everything prepped. the pimento cheese the eggs can be done ahead of time the pork belly and the chicken can be for the tacos and taquitos can be done uh slow cooker style mm-hmm. uh the hot browns can be prepped ahead of time and just thrown in the oven Yep. Make your life easy. Relax because, face it, after a few cocktails, you're not going to give a shit anyway. It's true. It really is. It is about walking around, talking every so often, turning and looking at the TV for a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, and then turning back and talking with your friends and having fun. Yep. And that's what it's all about. And enjoying that, hey, winter is over. Spring is here. Let's enjoy it. Let's be out and about. Uh, whether you're wandering through a living room in somebody's house or their den or you're outside on their patio or projecting this whole thing on the side of the garage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Tip number two. Roll with whatever the day brings. Have fun. Be social. Enjoy. And that really piggybacks on what we just said. Yep. You know, it's really just roll with it. Number three. Have a plan for rain. Indoors, tents, garage, something. Have some sort of backup plan so that if the worst thing happens, you're not going to go into complete panic mode. You're going to be able to handle the situation and you're going to just be able to roll with it and set everything up in your alternative space and everything is going to be fine and so much fun anyways, despite the rain. Look, it's springtime and we all know like April showers bring May flowers and what do May flowers bring? I don't know. Pilgrims. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I so gotcha. You're so red right now. Shut up. <laughs> Maybe you could just read number four. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> I think you should. So, yes, we'll just roll with it. And uh, number four. Hiring a few babysitters to keep an eye on the kids allows the parents to relax and socialize. And I cannot stress this. This is the best tip. I mean, it sounds so odd. It's like, wait a minute. It's a kid friendly party. Uh, The parents are there, but really getting some babysitters, especially ones who are in that 12 to 14 to 16 range who are just learning how to babysit. It's perfect for them because they keep the kids up occupied but the they themselves are supervised yeah so these are the often, kid, the parents are on site these are often called mother's helpers okay in case you were wondering about that i was not aware yep there there's a go. term for it mm-hmm. uh it's perfect it's money well spent because 
while you're there, if you got clingy little kids, um, which happens, it's not the end of the world. You're there, especially when you once you want to charge more for diaper service. Well, hell, you can do diapers, but they're not going to be pooping themselves the whole party. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. If they are, you need to shut your um, party down. <laughs> you've got no you do because germs well okay but you're there you can do that but at the same time with the clingy and keeping them occupied and making sure they're having fun you basically got party entertainers and that's what you're paying for yep jess what is the number five pick takeaway the you know our last takeaway from this whole thing number five is that your party does not need to be formal Paper hats and Monopoly money bets are just as fun as dressing to the nines and high rolling. Like, don't don't stress out over this. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be light and casual. If you are not, like, super fancy, don't try and make your party super fancy because that's not you and you're going to be super stressed the entire time. Look, if you've somehow managed to score tickets to Millionaire's Row at Churchill Downs, great. Dress to the nines. Otherwise, um... Go all out on your paper hat and have fun and put birds on your hat. It's whatever. Great. The main thing is it's Make not winter hat. anymore. Get outside, enjoy spring, uh, and the craziness and the you know that comes with spring, and just enjoy the fresh air and the horse racing. And it's an excuse to be social. And after over a year of COVID, even if you're doing it over Zoom. Any excuse to be in social at this point, take it. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. All of this can be done over Zoom or Facebook Live or what are the other options are. Google Meet. Do it. Do it. Have those social interactions because they're so important for your mental health and well-being. Mm. Are you dying, Jess? I am dying. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. It's been a long week. Yes, you should apologize for being tired of. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, before we go, though, do you have enough energy left? Because we need to give a shout out to the latest set of champions in the Red Arrow Challenge. The Red Arrow Challenge being our weekly multi-sport virtual challenge. Compete in the various categories or the composite points at the end, break broken down by their age group. And we give shout outs to the champions. Can you make it? Mm-hmm. All right, let's do this. Ready? Yes. Swimming. 20 to 29 Gator Boy, 50 to 59 Trek Tim, and 60 to 69 Kilogram Ill. Awesome. Running. 9 and under Easy E, 10 to 19 Lucky Dude, 20 to 29 H Kaner, 305, 30 to 39 The Logan, 40 to 49 906 Laker, 50 to 59 Johnny B. Good, nobody older than that, and our feature members, me. Walking. 9 and under Yellow Ninja, tw- 10 to 19, sorry. <laughs> 10 to 19, Lucky Dude. 20 to 29, Husky Mike. Husky with an I. 30 to 39, SB Nikki. 40 to 49, Vino Mia. 50 to 59, Teddy 68. 60 to 69, Pac Mac. And featured members, me. Biking on road. Starting to see more of this. 20 to 29, Gator Boy. 30 to 39, Cyclopath. 40 to 49, Cyclone. 50 to 59, Trek Tim, 60 to 69, Kilogram Ill, featured members, which are you and me. Mm-hmm. Me. <laughs> Biking off-road. 20 to 29, Husky Mike, 30 to 39, Dirt Devil, 40 to 49, 906 Laker, and nobody older than that, and uh, you and I aren't off-road bikers. mm Sit down paddling. 20 to 29, H. Kaner 305. Nobody in the 30 to 39 category, but 40 to 49, the champion was Tim 906. Good to see Tim 906 back. Stand up paddling. 20 to 29, Gator Boy. 30 to 39, Me West. 40 to 49, Coffee Dude. 50 to 59, Mary Mary. 60 to 69, Sunny D. Cross country skiing. 30 to 39, Alberto. 40 to 49, El Tiburon. 95. Skating. 20 to 29, Gator Boy, 30 to 39, Benny, 40 to 49, Great Juan with an 8, 50 to 59, Herb, 60 to 69, MRH313, and featured members, me. Hockey. 9 and under, Yellow Ninja, 10 to 19, Soleil, 20 to 29, Husky, Mike, 30 to 
30 to 39 Wildcat, 40 to 49 Coach T, 50 to 59 Herb, 60 to 69 Pac Mac feature members, me. Points. Oh, Coach Dan's favorite category. When Don't you say care. It. Points. Yeah, I know. Nine and under Yellow Ninja, 10 to 19 Lucky Dude, 20 to 29 Gator Boy, 30 to 39 The Logan, 40 to 49 Coach T, 50 to 59 Trek Tim. 60 to 69, Pack Mac. Nobody older than that are feature members. Me. Hooray for you. Hooray for me. Hey, it's great having you back. I missed you last week. Aw, thanks. I did miss you last week. Yeah. This is one of our favorite, or at least one of our main times to sit down and have a conversation, even if it's weird. With Nobody's these weird, interrupting like, us. Well, we got these weird like spit filter screens in front of our faces, and we got mics, and it's weird. A little bit. A little bit. But it's become like the new normal for us for over the past year plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the <laughs> way, this will be the first episode that posts after we made our uh, appearance on the Dietitian's Dish podcast. Uh, we had a nice guest spot on that. So yeah. if you are one of our regular listeners, go check them out. You can find them all over the place. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everywhere. Or just Google Dietitian's Dish Nicole and Gina were awesome. It was fun being on their they podcast. They were delightful. Yes. We had fun being on their podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, go listen to our parents. Go listen to their other episodes. Supposedly one of their best uh, performing at podcasts is one about sex. That was not the episode okay. we were on. Nope. No. We were just on one about uh, behavior and us. Yep. All right. You're dying, aren't you? I am so sorry. All right. Well, this has been fun. Loads of fun. Even if Jessica is dying and ready to fall asleep. Too much whiskey. Too much whiskey. Not day drinking. Nope. No letters, uh, emails to HR about this one about in regards to you. No, definitely not No, me. but after hours. Anyway, uh, we drop episodes every, uh, every week or almost every week mm-hmm. on Mondays. Yep. Used to be on Sundays. And we got another one coming next week. And it'll be fun. And you're dying. So... Bye. Goodbye.